Hey everyone, Chelsea here from So Simple Home. Today we're making a new project, one that might not be um, on your radar yet, uh, but maybe some of you have seen it. It's a project I'm really excited about because it's something that uh, I actually use every day. We are going to make heatless curlers. So if you have been around for a while, uh, you know that you can easily curl your hair without using any heat. Um, sometimes we call those rag ties, sometimes we call those uh, uh, just regular curlers. When I was a little girl we used sponge curlers. Um, but there's a, a cool contraption going around that basically is just a barrel made out of some type of satin material and two scrunchies. And you wrap your hair around this barrel and you use the scrunchies at the bottom of the barrel like this to keep your hair in place and it gives you really nice heatless curls. So we're going to sew up the project and at the end of the video I will show you how I personally um, do my heatless curls. Now this was the first barrel that I made and some things to note. Um, I thought this barrel was a little bit too wide so I've actually narrowed it down slightly. Um, and I've changed the length of the barrel. I made it 32 inches long. Um, this one I think was 30 and then I made another one and it was 36 and that was a little bit too long. So between 32 and 34 um, inches for your barrel I think will be the best. The other thing I noticed, this barrel is a little bit stiffer um, than what you want. It doesn't uh, manipulate with your hair as well. So you don't want a real stiff barrel when you're stuffing the barrel. So those are just a couple of things that I um, have come to find in making these barrels and using them on my hair. So hopefully this one here um, will, will be exactly the size that we need. So you're going to need to use some type of satin material. It does not have to be expensive. It could be an inexpensive costume satin, something that has a little bit of uh, like that silky fill and texture to it. If you want to use a regular cotton fabric, you can. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. The silkiness just helps it, um, helps your hair a little bit more. It comes off your hair a little bit easier. It doesn't get stuck as easily. I have used a, um, a towel tie, or not a towel, a robe tie, which is one of the popular ones. Um, and that works and it's a fleece material, right? So, you can use whatever you want, but for this, I have decided I really like this silky material. It feels good on my scalp and anywhere else it touches my skin. Um, so that is my suggestion. You're need, gonna need to cut a piece that is uh, 32 inches long by about five to five and a half inches wide. And again, this depends on um, the kind of curls that you want. I kind of like real loose curls, the big wavy curls. So five and a half works for me. If you want tighter curls, you might go down to four inches or four and a half inches and you'll have real tight curls. Um, and then you're gonna need another rectangle that is four inches by about 24 inches. And this, well, you'll need two of those because you're gonna make scrunchies from those and then 10 inches of elastic for your scrunchie. Okay, we're gonna start with our barrel. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in half hot dog style, like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch across here and down, and then we're gonna stop, cut our threads, leave a gap or an opening of about three to four inches. And this is where we'll end up stuffing our um, barrel. And then continue down, sewing all the way to the bottom, oops, try not to snag it, and then across, okay? So it's actually very, very simple, not a lot of stitching. We're gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, if we can keep my machine on here. I'm using white thread. I'd suggest you use a thread that matches, but I'm just using white so you can see it a little bit easier. So I get to my first pins, and I backstitch, I lift, cut my threads, 
and go down to my next ones and pull them out for back stitch and keep sewing. Now when you're working with a satin material or any kind of um, specialty fabrics, you want to make sure that you're using the right needle in your machine. You want the size to be smaller. That's my corner and back stitch. That way it doesn't snag your material as you're sewing. Okay, and usually you'll use a satin stitch, or excuse me, not a satin stitch, a, uh, a smaller stitch length um, so that it'll pick up all the material because a lot of times satins and silks, um, the weave is a little different and you want to make sure that you get, you don't skip any stitches. Okay, I just clipped my corners here. That's just going to take some of the bulk out of it when we turn it right side out. Now to turn it right side out, I'm going to find my opening. Open it up. I'm just going to put my thumb through and turn. Just like that. And then I can use the end of a paintbrush or the eraser side of a pencil or whatever and poke the corners out nicely. Do the same thing on the opposite side. It's going to take a little bit longer because it has a little more stitching. The length of it is a little longer. Down to there. My thumb out. Turn it right side out. Just like that. Now if you choose to change the size of your barrel, you want a thinner barrel, it is going to be, make it a little bit more difficult to turn it right side out. Just be aware of that. That's just part of life. Okay, so there's my barrel. Here's my opening. And now I have a basket of batting. And you don't have to use anything special for this project when it comes to batting. You can use regular batting because these are heatless curls. So you're not actually going to heat it up at all. And so it's not going to, um, or it shouldn't have any effect on your material. Now. For this one, I like to use a long wooden dowel. If you have one, great. If you don't, that's fine too. And then that helps me kind of get it into that corner. Now, like I said at the beginning, you don't want to overstuff this. Um, it shouldn't be like a, a real nice stuffed, stuffed animal, okay? It should have some give. So as you're getting your batting to the bottom, it shouldn't be real tough, right? I should be able to move it around. If you have too much batting, um, it doesn't lay over your head the way that it should. And um, it just makes it harder. Plus, it's not as comfortable to sleep on. <laughs> like I said, I've tried this a couple of different ways. And this, this tutorial that I'm showing you is the most accurate of them. And again, at the end, I will show you how I um, use it in my hair so that you can kind of see how it works for me. And these curls, they can last me for several days. Sometimes they don't. I have really, really straight hair. Um, my mom used to complain, complain about it when I was a little girl. <laughs> she never liked my hair. She's like, it's just so straight, I can't do anything with it. So I had to learn pretty quick how to kind of figure out how to do my hair. And I like having really straight hair, but when I want it curled, I want it to last a little bit longer. So these heatless curls work really, really nicely. All right. So that side's pretty good. Now let's do this other side. And then I'll show you how we'll close it up. And we're kind of going to cheat with closing it up. You can definitely hand stitch it closed. That is a thing. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. We are going to put it in our machine and stitch it closed because a lot of times when we hand sew, especially if we use something a lot, it doesn't keep its shape as long as we want. 
All right. That seems pretty good. I'm going to put just a little bit more down here on the bottom. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So this is where we're at. I should be able to manipulate it. Here, we'll go this way so you can see it. Should be able to manipulate it so it'll go around my hair. It should have some structure, but not a ton. We want it to be able to have a little bit of give. All right, so now I'm gonna close up my opening here. So I'm rolling the raw edge in slightly to make my little seam allowance. And I'm gonna pin it and do it without um, hopefully getting too crazy. So I'm closing it up with pins first. And then I'm gonna actually place it in my machine and stitch it closed. So I'm gonna stitch from here all the way down to here. And I'm just gonna close it up. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. And I'm gonna try and stay as close to the edge as I can. So to do that, you may have to really push that stuffing towards the side so it's out of your way. And that's just fine because you can manipulate that stuffing again in just a couple minutes when you uh, or finish stitching. So you can kind of see I'm guiding it with my finger so it stays on that edge. Get to the end here, back stitch, and pull it out. And then we just check and make sure that looks great. Okay, so there's my curler. And you can see I can just kind of manipulate it, right? If it's too stiff like this one, it's not as easy ma to manipulate. It doesn't keep its shape. You see how it moves? Whereas this one will keep its shape and stay where it's supposed to. That's what you want. All right, now we're going to do the scrunchie, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our scrunchie and we're going to line up our short sides. We're going to stitch it at a quarter of an inch. Right, we've got a little tab here on the end. We're gonna make what we call a burrito scrunchie. So we're gonna open this up and just finger press the seam that we just made here. And then we're gonna make the burrito. So we're gonna take the middle section here this is the right side of the fabric, the shiny side. This is the wrong side. So we're making it into a burrito. These are the fillings. This is the filling of our burrito. Yeah, you see the filling of our burrito? So we're going to fold it and put it on the inside. We want it on the inside. Then we're going to come and match the outside. I'm going to pin it just so that it will stay together for this. So it kind of looks like this. Okay, now we're going to start at the top making sure our filling, you can see our fillings folded inside. We don't want to sew the filling. We're sewing the tortilla. This is the outside of our burrito. We're sewing the tortilla. So we're going to start at the top of our tortilla at a quarter of an inch right on that, that uh, the edge of the presser foot. Forward and back. We're going to stitch down. As we're stitching, we're making sure that filling stays out of our way. So we're stitching down to the bottom, just on the tortilla. Now when we get to the bottom, we're going to make sure our needle's down. We're going to lift our presser foot and we're going to pull out the filling of our tortilla. Okay, and as we pull it out, we have more burrito. We have more tortilla here. So we're matching up the edge of our tortilla and stitching again all the way to the bottom, making sure the filling is out of the way. Keep going. Get to the bottom again, needle down, work that filling back out. 
Okay, make sure it's out of our way. Get our tortilla, the edges of our tortilla together. And keep sewing. We just want to make sure we don't sew on that uh, filling. Not a good idea. Now as we get closer to the end, you'll see here, this is where my stitching started right here on my burrito. You see it right there? So I want to leave an opening so that I can turn my burrito right side out. So the stitching starts here. I'm going to end about right here. So I'm going to keep sewing, back stitch, now I'm good. So I can turn my burrito here. Cut my threads. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like. It's very strange looking. But that's what you want. Kind of a weird burrito. Okay, now I'm going to put my elastic in. So I have 10 inches of elastic, this quarter of an inch elastic. Put it on the end of a safety pen. If you have a bodkin, you can use a bodkin. Whatever you have available for you. But a safety pen works great. Now before I turn this right side out, I'm putting my elastic in. I'm just pushing it through the middle of those that filling of my burrito. There's just kind of a, a hole right through the middle of my burrito. So I'm pulling my elastic through the middle of that hole. And then there's a couple things you can do. You can sew this on your sewing machine, forward and back a few times, or you can just take the elastic at the end, oops, and you can tie it in a knot. Also works great. I actually really like tying it in a knot because I feel like every time I make a scrunchie, if I just sew it, it doesn't stay together. Now we're going to turn it right side out. So I have my opening here, and I'm just pulling the scrunchie right side out through that opening. It's like magic. Elastic's already on. All I have to do is close up the hole right here where I turned it right side out. I'm just going to put one pin at the end, and I'm just going to put this right into my machine. You can, again, hand stitch it. Um, so that that stitch doesn't show. That's great. Or you can take it to your sewing machine. If you're using matching thread, you're not going to be able to see it as well. So, but again, I use white just so you guys can see. There's that stitch. And there's your scrunchie. How cute is that? So you're going to make another one of these. And then you'll have everything that you need. So here's my second one. You'll have everything that you need for your heatless curlers. So you need two scrunchies and then your heatless barrel. And that's all. So now you are ready to make heatless curls. And let me show you how I do my so first heatless thing curls. You're gonna do, I have really long hair. You're gonna divide it in two sides. You can keep your natural part or you can get rid of it. That's totally up to you. And then I like to add just a little bit of moisture. Um, this is day two of this hair. I can't remember. I can't re remember if I washed it yesterday or the day before. I feel like this is, so maybe we're on day three of this hair. I don't know. I usually go several days um, between washes because I have so much hair. Okay, so you can just see, I kind of clipped it. You look like an alien. That's okay, it's totally normal. Um, you do not have to get your hair wet if you don't want to, um, but I just find that that helps. So let me scoot up so you can see. So I'm just taking a front section of my hair and I'm gonna wrap it around the barrel nice and tight. And then I take another section of my hair, wrap it. Take another section of hair, wrap it. And you can see I clipped up here, that way the barrel kind of stays where it's supposed to. That's what you want. 
and I wrap it nice and tight because I want my curls to stay in place. Okay, and once you get all the hair from that side, then you just continue wrapping until you get towards the end. And then you just use your scrunchie at the end to keep it all in place. And if you wrapped it tight, it should keep its shape. Now, if you want real loose curls, then you can wrap it a little bit more loose. And I actually will use this method to sleep. I feel like the longer my hair has the curls in, the better. I'm gonna go just a little higher. Like that. And you do kind of look like a fool, but that's totally normal. Um, there are some on the market out there that you can wear, I guess, headwear, you know, more like a headband versus a barrel like this one. And that's kind of fun. For a long time, I used just the tie from my son's robe. That also works but I wanted to have something a little bit more stable. And so I came up with this. And you don't have to pay, you know, the $20 or $30 or however much. Okay, there you go. Now you can leave it like this and walk around your house like this. You can take it around the back and you can put each side into your scrunchie, kind of like that, so it's out of the way. You look like a queen, right? And then I, like I said, I'll just add just a little water because I know my hair, and my hair does a lot better if it dries, if it's wet and then it dries in the shape. So you get to leave this on for several hours, depending on your hair. Um, you might only need four hours. If your hair is like mine, you probably need a little bit longer, but we'll leave it in and then I'll kind of show you the results. They may not be great depending on how much time I have today to wear my hair like this. Like I said, if I wear it overnight, they look really, really good. So we'll come back in a bit and I'll show All you what right. it's like. It has been several hours. So we're gonna take out our curls and see what happens. Um, start with Take in the scrunchies. On both sides here. And just kind of shake it. And I got some on my hair it caught. So <laughs> let's see how it goes. And there you go. Some nice pretty waves. And that was beautiful. Super simple. And didn't take a lot of work, just some time. And this barrel is a little bit thicker. This is probably about an inch, one and a half inch. So if you want a tighter curls, you could make a loose or a smaller barrel as well. But that is how you make a heatless curler and how you curl your curls. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have questions, leave them in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.